Start us off, Carter. Uh, hello there. My name is Nathan Peterman. Uh, you might know me from that time I threw four interceptions in half. Um, currently for the Chicago Bears, uh, I just wanted I just wanted on record that um, I just suck at football. I'm not under criminal investigation. I'm just bad at football, everyone. The feds have not raided my house. Okay. Uh. Yeah, I don't. Nathan Peterman, I just. Hello, this is the feds. We're here to, uh, we're here to what inspect the fu- your house. I, we really need to barricade the walls every time we talk football. We got some uh, tips oh, from another- online Reddit Our users that uh, you might oh. be in violation of he- some out. really hot pigs. Uh, hear me out, sir. Um, they're Reddit users, so. <laughs> Need I say more? Yes, but you see, you see, the Reddit users wouldn't know about the posts if you were also not on a Reddit. Uh, specifically, you, um, this gentleman rambling about uh, football. Sir, is that a weapon? I'm already running. Sir, is that? Oh, he's but, he's on hey. foot. Pow, 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 hey. pow, pow, pow. <laughs> pow, 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 pow. Reload, reload, <laughs> reload, reload. Pow, pow, pow. Oh God. Oh, I'm really glad there's not a football team named after trains because we're derailing, baby. Again. Oh, my hot takes. Well, it seems like we've done our work for the day, eh, deputy? Another day protecting the innocent. Yes, sir. I think. And we'll let the boy. We'll <laughs> let the eggheads in the lab figure that out, right? We have a lab. No. Don't tell them we don't. <laughs> hey, can I see your guys' lab? Reload. Pow, pow, pow. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you still shooting me? We never leave the office without three magazines. <laughs> Gotta be safe around this. That's place. why he's the best. <laughs> uh, and that's that's our bit. So, uh, aim for the bushes, partner. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> There <laughs> goes my hero. Watch him as, as we get goes. demonetized. <laughs> we were monetized? No, but we won't be with that. Yeah, but Damn. it will be entertaining. Hey, you can cut it out if you want. No, that's too much work. You'll just be robbing the world of comedy gold. I literally Damn. just said that would be too much work. That's a bold gambit. Um, <laughs> that was yeah, that... um. Yeah, you know what? That uh, that's what happens when we talk football in here. Somebody gets shot. Um, for some reason, that, that reminded me of a bit from the Simpsons I just nice. saw. That was like um, uh, Ralph asking Ned, um, "Do the people my daddy shoot get to go to heaven?" Oh, yeah. Well, they didn't do anything wrong, which, given your dad, probably means a bunch of them. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to Carter and Kevin Talk Football. Carter here. And I'm Kevin. Was, was that when I was supposed to introduce myself? Oh, God, yeah. Uh, I, sorry, did the Disney desk opening. No, you're good. Um, yes, we are, we are back for week two of football hijinks, japes, and other tomfoolery. Um, we had a very interesting week on the docket this week. It was quite a, quite a time watching football this week. Um had the thursday night game for the eagles so i didn't have to like sunday wasn't dedicated to like one team specifically it was just spread in the wealth oh yes yes um my family just got youtube tv so i was able to dabble with the technology it's true like i know the meme but it really is incredible how crappy direct tv's running of the nfl ticket sunday ticket was and how YouTube did it right on the first try. Like, look, say what you want about YouTube. There's a reason why they've merged all of their competition, because they're just better. They're just better at this than everyone. Like, their interface is better, their planning's better, their bandwidth better. Um, so, yeah, we had a fun slate of games. So, I say we dive right in with our highlights. Oh, Kevin died. Um, I just had to, oh. had to check something. Um, I guess I get in here. Oh, no, he's alive. It's bad. 
Um, all right, so I would say starting off with some of the highlights, a lot of close games this week. Oh yeah. Um, and I don't know, I don't know your thoughts on that, but um, well, honestly, like one of the pleasant surprises is because so much of this off season was talking about, like teams that look like they're actively trying to tank or are like just feel awful on paper, but to see so many close scores, regardless of context, I don't know. It's nice that even the bad teams are at least putting up fights. Mm -hmm. Like, they're not just completely, like, in a ditch. There are only, like, two or three teams in the entire league that I'm like, I feel like the vibes are bad right now. Yeah. Whereas every other team, even the Cardinals, I'm like, well, you're getting some victories at least. Like, at least you're showing up. Yeah. I, I did the math. And there were 13 games that were all within one score. Yeah, and, like, even the ones that weren't. Like, the Texans, they lost by 11. Like, I don't know, you showed up to play. Like, um, like, you know, the, like, the Bengals at least tried at the end. Like, yeah, people rallied towards the end. Shout out to the Giants. Shout out to the Commanders. Um, oh yes, yeah. The only three. So there's three games this week, entire week because there were 16 games played that weren't within that threshold, and it was Colts Texans. And I'm being a little vigilant with like technically you can make it with a touchdown and a two point conversion. I count that as right. a one score game. Um. So Colts Texans. Jets, Cowboys, and Bills, Raiders were the only three games this week that were outside of that one score threshold. Oh, and I guess technically Bears and Buccaneers too. All right, so I might have miscounted. Yes. Yeah. Well, well, I said there were some bad vibes, but we will get to that. Right. that that's the thing. But yeah. Yes. Um, great. Yeah, and on great that note, showing. Yes. Um, and on that note, a huge Giants comeback. Uh, the Giants looked uh i don't know how to describe it other than uh in a ditch uh they were down by 20 going into the half yep people on giants like socials were straight up just despondent uh the craziest thing i saw was daniel jones for zach wilson straight up the giants get to crash burn and rebuild which i have to assume was the original plan when they brought brian dable in Mm -hmm. and the jets at least theoretically have a better quarterback they had been outscored by 60 points um, oh, coming off God. that Cowboys game. And then just rattled off... Uh, <laughs> they just rattled off uh, basic, almost like 30 unanswered points to take the lead at the last possible second. And, like, I'm not going to say this saved their season because... They still have a I don't very know what, tough season. Oh, yes. That's what I mean. Like, they're, the ceiling for their season, did especially... Um, as a result of this game losing Saquon Barkley, which we'll talk about later. But, like, I don't know. In terms of, like, the preservation of vibes, you can't lose to the Cardinals. Like, again, the Cardinals look tougher than we thought they'd be, but at the same time, they're still the Cardinals, and you were in the playoffs last year. Yeah. Like, you can can just throw up your hands for that Cowboys game. It was pouring rain. You got mollywopped early. And, like, at that point, it's just... Uh, slog, but like, yeah, this was would have been an unacceptable loss. Yeah, no, lo- losing to the Cardinals is like you got to have a lot of things going on to lose to them, and because they're just not that good of a team. The fact that it's mm-hmm. a close game is insane. Like the Giants went. Zero for sixty points scored against them at the for the in the first two games. No. Like that's like clearly the last team to score this entire season. They have to be right. Yeah. Oh no, they not, definitely were. Think... Everyone else at least got a field goal week one, except for the Giants. What a... Well, that's why I was like in our comedy points league. I was like, God, man, why are we? Why are we? Why am I losing so bad? I'm like, oh yeah, because Grant Gano got zero points. League. I'm the winner. Let's go. That's all I have to say. <laughs> yeah, you you had your bit, sir. Get out of here. No, I have to say that I'm winning a football thing for the first time in my life, even though it's a meme, and I'll probably lose it next week, but I'm the reigning champ right now. So be prepared, because I'm going to be using my comedy points against some of you 
this Ooh. week probably. I gotta update the counter. Um, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> anyway, bye. Bye, Tom. Um, yeah, so as we move on to another section of the week, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, probably the biggest surprise mm. of the 2-0 and teams. I, um, I think our discussions were a lot of the Buccaneers do not have it in the preseason. They have, yes, it's the we Mike were like, Evans. they will be one of the five worst teams. Mike Evans show, Baker Mayfield and Kyle Trask are fighting for the starting spot. It's... Mm. That's that's how we started, and how how are they doing, Carter? Two and zero oh with a big win against the Chicago Bears. Now, perhaps a part of this could be that the teams they played were the Minnesota Vikings and the Chicago Bears, uh, two teams who just might not be it this year, Chief. But at the same time, it is hard to ignore that. Look, the defense is still. Very good. It's still close. It's still a lot of the guys from that Super Bowl. They still have a handful of skill position players. And again, Baker Mayfield, the problem with Baker Mayfield isn't that he can't get you to the playoffs. He's just not a ceiling raiser. He's like perfectly good. He can get the job done in spurts, but he's physically limited and like just isn't going to be that guy who gets you over the hump. Like he can't do it by himself, but he doesn't have to yet. Maybe he'll have to at some point this season, and it'll blow up. But for now, I do think this is one of the bigger moral victories in the league. Yeah, the keyword is yet in that statement. Because who knows what's going to happen? Who knows what the script writers are thinking for this season? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's the NFC South. Someone, like, any of these teams will end up winning. Like, maybe the Panthers will turn it around. Who knows? Yeah, which... Also, just the insane concept of this last week, every division was actually still currently happening. Three or four teams in the NFC South are two and oh. That's three or four teams in the NFC East are two and oh. And I believe every single, yeah, every single NFC North team lost this last week. Look, everyone, like, when you're around people enough, your cycles tend to overlap to, you know, say it in a slightly more tasteful way, perhaps. Yeah, it's... It's kind of just insane. I think... Oh, yeah. You you might be able to find documentation on this where we refer to the... I think both AFC and NFC South as the worst division of each conference. Okay. Well, in our defense, the Carolina Panthers still look very bad. Oh, and yeah. the uh, the Texans are better than expected, which isn't necessarily a huge bar to jump over. We weren't wholly wrong, just a little wrong. Just a little wrong. Yeah. All right. What are... Um, yeah. So you were... Speaking of instantly good. Yes. Yeah, I was going to say... You wrote down Lamar MVP. Go off. I team. would. Yes. So I, my whole pitch was it'll be, it'll start slow, but once the offense gets going, it will start paying like a slot machine. I've always been in the stance of Lamar is a good thrower who's been put in a system that does not encourage his best abilities. Throwing over the middle and a handful of deep shots. Like his skills were not being used to their full potential. You want to know an insane stat? So last year, the Ravens had the least amount of plays with three wide receivers. They would literally remove a pass catcher from the equation. They've already passed that number of sets this year in two games. That's how different their offense is this year. And, like, it is so crazy watching him in this game. And it's not the sexiest stat game, but it is just a game where it's like, Right, this is why we like Lamar, because he can control a game. He can just methodically move the ball downfield, and just when you think he's out of options, just when you think you don't have a way to beat him, he comes up with some run, or he just does a little enough enough of a scramble to get the ball off, and you lose him. You, he gets the first down. And it's so nice to see him actually have breathing room for a change. He's not just like 
being forced to do these design runs that get him beat up. He's taking advantage of the fact that he's electric and open space and using runs sparingly. I think the best example of like how things are better now is Nelson Aguilar is actually good on this team. Nelson Aguilar's problem, well, his problem this whole time has been like he is not a number one guy. The Patriots tried to make him a number one guy. The Eagles tried to make a number one guy. He is like your fourth guy whose job is to just run very, very fast down the field to stretch everything out. And now he gets to do that. Zay Flowers looks like the real deal as a rookie. And I think Lamar is going to have a very, very bountiful season as long as he stays healthy. There, yeah, no, I'm I'm kind of on the anti-Lamar train. Mm -hmm. Um, He's got a lot more to prove to me before I decide like if he's an mvp candidate and i and there's some like clear front runners of like usual front runners of candidates from past years that um like you got patrick mahomes who hasn't had a super impressive showing jalen hurts mm-hmm. who hasn't had a super impressive showing josh allen same joe burrow same situation so it's mm-hmm. kind of interest like he, I can see him being a front runner, but I'm just not sold on it. Like the arc of this season is going to be me realizing that Jalen Hurts, Justin Fields isn't very good, and yours is going to be that Lamar's good. It'll yeah. be the perfect horseshoe that bounces out this season. Yeah, pretty much. Where one of us, we each fall to another one of our the the other's takes. Correct, Mundo. All right. Uh, another highlight from this past week. Some rookies came to play, and they played big. Oh, yes, yes. Um, Our beloved Anthony Richardson uh, continued to look great in time. Uh, I will say Shane Steichen looks like an offensive genius in terms of exactly realizing what the team is and isn't good at and building an offense around that. A lot of wing tee, a lot of designed runs, a lot of power running game, a lot of throws in the middle, and a lot, like, it's just a good play diversity. And you just watch like Anthony Richardson take the ball <clears throat> on a designed run and just book it toward the goal line. And you're like, yeah. how is someone supposed to stop him? He's the size of Derrick Henry, but faster. Like he ended up getting knocked out of the game with a concussion. And honestly, yeah, one of my hot takes is yes. My hot take is like, maybe just don't play him for like three or four weeks. Like for me, you've proven like proof of concept is established. Like, He's proven that the game isn't too big for him. He can run with the big boys, and yes. he can do well. Now just rest him, let Minshew carry out the season. Like, you're not going to the playoffs this season, even if Anthony Richardson Almost is at the best of the Almost they're not going to the playoffs. And uh, I don't know their schedule. Hey. What's up? You know who else came big? Oh, dear Lord, where are you going? Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm going to shoot him with a gun later, maybe. Oh, man. We're... A fictional pow-pow-pow gun, but... Pow-pow-pow mm-hmm. reload. See, here's the thing. Uh, Colts don't have a super crazy difficult season, like, season from here on out. Hmm. Like, they, got the, they have the Rams, they have the Ravens this upcoming week. Um, You got Saints and Browns who are kind of... Eh? But then you have True. you have the Buccaneers, you have the Raiders, you have the Texans again. You got the Titans twice. I guess for me, it's just a matter of building up your skill position. Like, that's the problem of dragging things so far out with um, Andrew Luck. It's like all of the cool stuff you built around Andrew Luck is now too old. Yeah. So you basically have to do it again. And I would rather save him as many hits this year as possible in order to just speed drive that development I think, of like talent around him. Yeah, I think this this would be a good year to keep him healthy. If he gets right, if he gets hurt or even just like thinks he tweaks something, pull him for the game, throw in Minshew madness himself. Um, exactly. What's and, the point of having one of the better? Uh, backups if you're just not going to use them. Yeah. And just have them keep the kid healthy. There was clear errors with that with Andrew Luck. And they could have done so much with him. And Exactly. This kid 
is a beast. He had an average of I don't want to I don't want to downplay him. Give me one second because he ran three times. To, like he had three carries, two of them were for touchdowns, and he got thirty five yards. That's pretty like for very small stats. That's pretty insane. Mm-hmm. Like sure, that's probably a lot of like goal line plays, but he that's still an average of. 11.7 yards per carry. That's that's not a laughable stat. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah, again, it can't be overstated enough. If I was Kenny Mack, I would be... Like, and Bryce Young hasn't looked terrible, but it's just, he looks like you would worry he would, where it's like, he is a size and a level of athleticism that cannot make up for the fact that the team around him isn't very good. Yeah. And it's like maybe that would have been good on the Detroit Lions where they are place, but it's not good on the Carolina Panthers who kind of suck. Yeah, no. You, the, I think I think Bryce Young is showing like he like he's a good quarterback, but you like Picking him first before thinking about building a team around him isn't proving out to be super successful because they have a lot of, like, interesting pickups from this last year. Like, they got Miles Sanders, Adam Thielen, things like that, where it's like they reworked a lot of the system, and it's people Mm -hmm. that have been with, like, more top-tier quarterbacks than he's showing. And he... It's like, I mean, he's also a rookie. Bryce Young's not going to be on the same level as Jalen Hurts was last year. Bryce, oh, Young, yeah. Bryce Young's not going to be on the same level as old man Kirk Cousins was. And is. It's just a matter of, like, logistics and getting the kid used to it. And they have, I would say, two years to build around him before it's like, this guy's a bust. Right, right. Um, and on the other and or on the other side of the field, or rather the other side of the offense, uh, Puka Nakua, um, who has inexplicably set the record for most catches in a rookie's first two games. Um, I genuinely don't know what to think of this guy. Great showing so far. Like this is kind of the cl- not the claims, but like the people people were like out on the Rams. Us included. Mm-hmm. Can't deny that. Oh, yeah. Um, but he... Uh, he showed up to play. And it's one of those things where I'm wondering... All, like, he, One of the biggest talks from the Rams this offseason was Matt Stafford can't reach these kids. But this... this Sean McVay can, apparently. Yeah, this rookie and him are some... They got some chemistry, at least, with how well he's doing. Yeah, it's, like, I guess it's, like, a testament to, like, you know, I'm always questioning of these, like, offense geniuses, but it's a testament to, like, again, Matthew Stafford was on some pretty bad lines teams and was able to make, like, was able to make something out of nothing. Yeah. And even though he's a bit beat up and he's a little older, and you could tell he was a San Francisco uh, game, he is able to elevate guys who have, like, physical up, you know, who have upside, who have potential. Um, and, like, again, the I, I, like, Sean McVay's done this before. Like, there was a yeah. time when Robert Woods and Brandon Cooks were the star receivers getting 1,000 yards for the um, Rams. There was a time when, like, Sammy Watkins was producing for them. Yep. He's able to get guys and elevate them. And I think this is a good case of like a middle round flyer just getting an opportunity in the wake of Cooper Cup not being available. Yeah, he... I think the best thing that happened to this kid is Cooper Cup getting hurt. Like... Oh, um, yeah. It gives... It clearly makes a hole in their receiving room. And he's got a couple of weeks to just show up and play. And as long as he doesn't lose the momentum he's currently building, 
I don't see this kid sitting on many sidelines even when uh, Cup is back. I think he might be <laughs> might be more fighting for the wide receiver two or maybe the three spot. Oh but yeah, he's not gonna. I don't think he's if he keeps the pace he's going at, he's not gonna be seen on on the sidelines too too much. A lot of talk going into this, like, training camp was that the vibes were inexplicably really good. And the stress of following up the Super Bowl, the stress of being all in is now gone, and they can just play ball. And I, that's kind of how a yeah. lot of this team feels. Um, except uh, Cam Akers, who m- remains one of the odder stories in recent NFL oh, history. Man. Uh, just announced today, he's now going to the Vikings, too. Which I'm like, what an oh, I, so the Vikings move. aren't trying to lose. Yeah, I'm. I'm curious. Yeah, I'm though. curious to see where that goes. Because I have yeah, I like no it's idea. Of it what? just seems like something went wrong in LA. Because he was good for a little bit, and then just the Achilles tear, and just for some reason he just did not vibe with the team anymore. I feel like this trade for the Rams is more just like the only way we're getting through this season is immaculate vibes. So this simply cannot be. Yeah. All right. Going on to the don't sleep on them games of week two. Uh, Kevin, you have the your. All right. So my pick and I had a lot of thorough, like thorough watching of this. It was Seattle versus Detroit. Now, I know we said that Colts and Texans was the don't sleep on game this week, and I'm not saying that was a terrible game. Mm-hmm. Cuz there was a couple terrible games this year this week, but that wasn't definitely not one of them. But Seattle versus the Lions going ending in a hint of controversy with the ref calls and stuff, but mm-hmm. close game throughout the entire match, like the entire game. And it is just a. It was a battle. Went into overtime, where the that's where the Seahawks won it. But it was you were never thinking, oh, this team's out of it at any point. Mm-hmm. And I think that's that's what's important. Plus, it's not like you got. It's like Geno Smith and the gang versus Jared Goff and the gang. Like it wasn't like a. The, this is the Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey show. Oh, or yeah. Or this is the Justin Jefferson network. This was, like, a little bit more of, I think I think I want to describe it as, like, like kind of like the Goonies, <laughs> where they just never wanted to say die. They're both playoff caliber teams, just not, like, they're, they might not win the division, but they could be in the wild card round. And that's that's why they're my pick for the don't sleep on game. Did you hear the clip of they the ref oh, made yeah. a bad call on intentional grinding? I'm speaking to America. Right? <laughs> if you say something like that as what a referee, you can't be allowed. You have to be banned. I'm sorry. Like oh, you can't I, feel that self important. Polar opposite end of the spectrum. I want not on a bad call. On bad calls, a little bit of a different story. But I would love to hear the refs just be more real about things like uh what was the one play once everybody uh fall star on everyone but the center and it's just oh, yeah. like shrugging that and it's like like i love call I forgot about that one i love it when you pick up the refs on the mics and you get something you get something good you get a gem <laughs> and it's not like and it's not like when you watch the XFL where they have mics on the sidelines at all times and you hear some someone swearing and then they mute for like two minutes after they swear. And then <laughs> they're like, all right, let's go see what's going on in like the Sea Dragon sideline. And you hear just going, yo, what the hell? And it's just like the guy in the ESPN truck is just, I'm assuming he just has his face in his hands with his finger over the button at any given time. And it was missed all the time. Um, what is your sleeper game of the week? Because we didn't agree on this one this week. We do this every year. We say, this is the year the Chargers, with all their sexy logo and their nice stadium, 
and their anime star names. This is the year it's all going to come together for them. And then we forget, oh, right, they're cursed. That's why it's never going to work out for them. Like, they had a definitive... They had what felt like a pretty definitive lead for most of this game. It felt like they couldn't possibly screw this up. And yet they did all of the classic Chargers thing. Inexplicably gave up huge, like, chunk plays to Ryan Tannehill, who looked dead in the water last week, despite designing their entire defense around not giving up chunk plays. Justin Herbert, like just kind of like getting too robotic and too rigid at critical times. A classic Brandon Staley coaching bit where they had the Titans on third down, Derrick Henry needed to get a breather on the sidelines, and for some reason, because he didn't like his defensive set, called a timeout, letting the one good offensive player this team has get back on the field and get the first down. And then, despite having almost a whole minute and a timeout to score a touchdown, they only get like two plays off and are forced to kick a field goal where it goes to overtime and they lose. This team, it's just every year, man, it's so funny, like clockwork. And for some reason for me, this is a sleeper game because I don't think Brandon Staley, the coach, makes it out of this season. If not this, like, I think he might be fired by November if this keeps happening because someone asked him, like, why were you so conservative in your play calling? You know, was it because of the Jags game where they lost, gave up, uh, mul- or, um, you know, they had a multiple touchdown lead against uh, the Jaguars and lost in the playoffs? Yeah. And it kept being like, no, no, no. And I'm like, oh, this guy's spiraling. And the worst thing you can be as a coach is spiraling because yeah. once the guy who's supposed to steer a ship of superstars starts sputtering and stuttering and, like, literally sweating, it's just game fucking over. Like... There's no recovering from this. If it's that, it's literally like when Chicago had the double doink, not stop talking about it. You're like, oh, this man, this man is, this man is lost at sea. We can't have him here anymore. Just priceless, priceless Chargers memories. I think it's one of, it's one of those times where like, there's all this hype, especially around Justin Herbert. Mm -hmm. Everyone's talking about, he is a top four QB and stuff. But it's like he sh- he shows the potential for it, but things happen around him that I feel like take him out of the elite level picture. Right. It's it's frustrating because, like, you know, logically I can point to things and be like, none of this is his fault. He's doing his best, yeah. but and he's playing well. But at the same time, it's like, I don't know, man. Josh Allen played in a pretty shitty team when he first went to the playoffs. Like, he basically had to be the running back, fullback, and quarterback. Yeah. Like, you know, no. like Patrick Mahomes got he- like literally was on like a b- damn near broken ankle in multiple playoff games yes. and pulled it out. Like, I just at some point, y- if you're really elite, the excuses have to stop. Yeah, because it's like at least when it comes for me to like, I'm thinking how elite it is, like a quarterback is. I'm thinking how many like quality receivers they have and, or like running backs how good their own running game is, who their head coach and offensive coordinator are. Like, there's a, it's a lot more than just who the guy is. <laughs> and if he's in a situation where he's set up for success constantly with things, and that's, like, he's set up for success, but he still does, like, all right, pretty good, has games, has good yards. But he has, like, for example, Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy has Shanahan as a coach. He's got George Kittle, Brandon Ayu, Debo, like Christian McCaffrey. He's got weapons anywhere he can think to throw it or put it on the field. He's got somebody decent. And Mm. that doesn't put him in the elite quarterback position because I feel like you can just put almost any average, at least relatively average probably slightly above average quarterback there and you'll get a great season out of them but that doesn't Mm. make them elite level quarterback because he's working with the amount he's working with like if you go back a couple seasons when like the chiefs dynasty first started it's the patrick mahomes and travis kelsey show under andy Reid, and it still pretty much is but they like that's how they 
that's how Patrick Mahomes proves he's elite because he's outside of Travis Kelsey, he's not working with too much anymore. And mm-hmm. he's still pulling out crazy plays, rallying the troops, and Justin Herbert isn't really fighting the same adversity as like a QB that's up shit creek without a paddle. But he's still a good exactly. enough QB to boot, to show up and play. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's just, again, like, I know the nerds love him so much, but, like, just win a playoff game, man. Like, all of your peers have. Yeah. Like, Lawrence, Allen, Mahomes, Lamar, literally everyone you're considered a sort of equal to has now. And at some point, it's like, you know, how many more people can be thrown in front of you as an excuse? Um, which kind of leads us into the lows. Yeah. Um, do you want to start with some running back tragedies? Because i got to grab something real quick. Yes. Running back tragedies. Um, this was a rough week. And as someone who's been very loud uh, sort of wagon, this was, like, affirming to me. Because, like, the Giants do not win that game unless Quan Barkley goes, like, super sane. Scoring two touchdowns, basically dragging that team before, like, I, I think he missed, like, maybe a single snap. I'm pretty sure the second half he didn't leave the field until he finally had an ankle sprain at, like, the final play. And you could tell how furious he was because it's just always getting these injuries. Like, you know, he's had to recover from so many damn injuries at this point. And, you know, it, like, I think uh, this Thursday night game might be a bloodbath. I can't think of something I'd want to watch less than watching a Saquon Barkley-less Daniel Jones-led Giants team against this 49ers team. Like, like it, it, it's just an absolute bummer that this guy who really is the star of the Giants, he's the face of yeah. New York football, like, he's the is guy. completely screwed. And uh, which also leads us into the face of uh, Cleveland sports, uh, oh. Cleveland football. Uh, Nick Chubb uh, on Monday Night Football had an injury an egregious injury that I would simply describe as uh, imagine if your shin bone and your thigh bone changed roles. Man. And that's how they were moving. I'm not, I'm not a super squeamish individual, but that one, that one sent to like a, a heebie jeebie through my body. Absolutely mortifying and heartbreaking because like I get very hard around, get very, None of that is geared toward him. He. It is a shame that him and Miles Garrett, two of the most genuinely likable, hardworking, talented people in the yeah. NFL, are stuck with this black cloud over their head because he has been nothing but a good role model and a good guy and inspiring too because this is the same knee where he basically tore every single ligament in before. Uh, yeah. He obliterated it once before and now it gets obliterated again in like one of the worst possible fashions. It's it's one of those injuries that they don't show replays on. So if you missed it, you're hoping somebody recorded it on their phone to right. show to post on Reddit because it was it was brutal. And we are sincerely talking about a career ending situation. Yeah, no, that's that's like that's not even like a like I, I, the one uh, the example I was thinking of was uh, Aaron Rodgers with his ACL, but Rodgers is up there in age. But like, if it was like a younger Aaron Rodgers with his ACL injury, it's like all right, he can technically come back from that. But the second time you blow it, like you blowing up your leg like that, and it's it's a shame when it's one of those guys where it's like like Hart you were talking about. Couldn't happen like it couldn't happen to a nicer guy too. Mm-hmm. And it's just why I get so on the case of like at some point I don't want to hear about positional value. These people are actively putting themselves in danger. They are the faces of your franchise. They take the biggest hits. Like, pay them. Literally, the only silver lining to this is that like the Browns will now have to face the prospect of their $200 million genuinely bad person quarterback, the exact opposite of Nick Chubb, getting completely humiliated on a national stage and actively costing them that game 
it is the only silver lining to all of this that you know they are they're stuck they they do not have the talent to compete but they can't afford to spend any more money on this team that wasn't really going that far anyway yeah no they that's a lot of money and they had a pretty solid showing week one too and now now the money is going to be in a little bit of a like ooh, we can't afford to do much for a hot second Mm -hmm. Uh, another low point um Bears are it's definitely bad. Oh, the Bears. Yeah. Oh, God. I had to get up for um, a second, and I wanted to be back for this topic. Um, right. Get on my soapbox about my anti-Justin Fields thing thoughts. Yes, yes. Let's get it out, then. It's the Bears, man. Like, the Bears have, like, were very good in the past, especially, like, Free turn of the century but once once again it's the mind reader himself uh baker mayfield trying to like leading the still ragtag group of the buccaneers in my opinion and he you have like possibly a decent game like decent to easiest game and Justin Fields throws 16 for 29, one touchdown, two interceptions. And it's just like, oh, man, you you don't feel pretty about that one, like those stats. And yeah. I saw some highlights and some, like, more hardcore Bears slash Buccaneers fans analyzing it because I wanted to be prepared. There was probably a half dozen plays where Justin Fields has to turn his head two degrees, not even a lot, just a hint more. And there was somebody wide open, just nobody was entertaining the thought of him. And I don't know if it was just my dislike of the hype around Justin Fields or what, but the, it seemed like the Packers, or not the Packers, the Buccaneers were... We're just like, you know what, let's let's let them be open. It's not like he's going to throw it to them. Yeah. Kid got sacked six times, too. Um, Where's your elite-level quarterback if he's pulling up stats like that, where you get sacked six times? So he's holding on to the ball, not just throwing it away. Two interceptions, and... Like, the Bears' offense isn't exactly, like, like top tier, but it's also, like, he's got Cole Komet, DJ Moore, Claypool. Like, he's got solid receivers to throw to. Yeah, um, I, I actually, there's a great article on the Ringer Podcast Network by Benjamin Solak that just makes a laundry list of what's gone wrong so far. I've never seen it. There's very few times I've seen it. Uh, like a team turned so sour so fast for middling hype. Like this would be like in our third year where we got Stefan Diggs. If Josh Allen just was like, Oh, he's literally the same player. He's been this whole time. But here are just some of the bullet points he brings up. Justin Fields is terrible going through his progressions. He is comfortable with neither open with either an open first reads or open second reads. He's either too fast or too slow to read the play with no rhyme or reason as to why. The scheme makes no sense. They run plays like they have no faith in him, only to have the next play be a full field progression that you'd expect from a top-tier quarterback. The Bears also stopped doing the stuff that worked last season, which is inexplicable. Um, last week, you know, last season, he averaged seven designed runs per game, not scrambles. He has five total through these first two games. Chase Claypool actively looks like he does not want to play football. He's running the wrong routes. Um, he doesn't fight for tough catches. He doesn't even really try to block. Uh, Fields is not comfortable in the pocket. He panics under the slightest pressure and clearly has his head down. Uh, the offensive line is terrible. It feels like blitzes have a 100% success rate. And it goes on and on like that. And that's before we get to the fact that their defensive coordinator apparently had the FBI raid his office, if you're wondering what that greasy, convoluted bit at the beginning of this episode was allusion to. Um, he's resigned. 
uh, their left tackle might be out for the entire season with a neck problem. And also, um, Justin Fields threw his entire coaching staff under the bus, which I will only give him credit in the sense of, like, if I'm looking around and seeing how quickly the sink is ship, sink, the ship is sinking, I, too, would want to get out in front of it and just try to save my career by blaming everyone around. Basically, pull the same Darnold, where we keep making yeah. excuses for him based on coaching. Yeah, no, it's like the excuse party. And I, I wasn't super sold on him last year, and... I'm just, I'm feeling vindicated more and more each week. Yeah, I'm, it's not looking great for me, Chief. I'm excited to see when they play, who do they play next week? They play the Chiefs. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Man. Maybe this is where he all turns it around. This is where he finds, Yeah. where he finds himself. All right. Another, um, another it's Zach kind Wilson. Of dud, yeah, I was going to say. Specifically, just, the Zach Wilson Jets. Where to begin? It's just, well, no, it's we know where to begin. It's Zach Wilson, and, and the Jets. what's what's funny is like okay, maybe they got a bad beat playing the Bills and the Cowboys, two consistently good defenses. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like it's the same shit. He thinks he's better than he is. They have zero faith in him. So then they get stuck in these inevitable situations where it will be third and eight, where he has to throw because you didn't get any yards on the two obvious runs. So then it just creates a never-ending cycle of having to force him to do things he's not comfortable with because you wouldn't let him do things earlier. Uh, their run game is collapsing. Uh, the wide receivers clearly look fed up already. If they score a touchdown, it's a fucking miracle. And yeah, it's just the same shit. Only the players have to like bite their tongue and eat the lemons because you sold out to get Aaron Rodgers and now you don't have an Aaron Rodgers and you have no choice. Because you can't, like, I love all of, like, the propositions of, like, well, you could trade for Cousins, you could trade for this guy, you could trade for that guy. They can't That's spend any more capital on quarterback. Yeah. They already wasted a second overall pick and then another first-round pick and a lot of money to get this quarterback room that isn't good. Oh, man. There is, this is what I'm, this is one of those moments where if you had an average, like, going back to my elite-level quarterback talk, if you had an average level or like slightly above average level quarterback on this team, Jets would be doing just fine. They have a very solid defense. Like, I'm not saying that it's the best defense, but they have some big players on it. And they have like a solid running back room, mm -hmm. solid receiving room. And. They have a decent amount of talent that they just need to use. But the person leading the charge is Zach Wilson. And at some point, it's like, you have to let him, you just have to let him try. You have to let, you have to be like, all right, fine, sling it around the yard. Let's like see what you can do. Because it's like, if the team, like, because we've done this before with like, oh, if this team just had a quarterback, they'd be good. And it's like, well, let's see how good you are, because a lot of crappy quarterbacks have gone to play in Super Bowls. Yeah. Trent Dilfer won a Super Bowl. At some point, you have to be like, can he at least be good as Trent Dilfer? Can we figure that out and go yeah. from there? Uh, it's just, like, if there's any solace to that scar on my chest from losing to them, it's that we ended their season. Like, their season's over. Yeah. And, like, unless they're really willing to get desperate and basically make a devil's bargain to get another quarterback, their season's over. So we, like... You know, we saved everyone, uh, you know, from the Jets going to the playoffs. So I thank you, America. This is like also you're just welcome, America. a on paper. If you go back to the before week one started on paper, Jets looked like a huge threat. But now with what's happened and but because they're in the AFC um, East, their mm -hmm. schedule is very difficult. That's a, like that, oh, was a, yeah. that was a hard schedule. Like they've got Chief, um they got the Eagles. I believe they also have the Chiefs. They have Oh yeah, they Oh god. I mean they have the Broncos, but you know, Broncos are might be a little bit of a gimmick. Well at least the Broncos will get a win. Yeah. Yeah. Uh they have a bye week. They actually like, East got that? a bad pull this season. Yeah. Jets don't really have yeah. like they There's need... no light at the end of this tunnel. Yeah. 
they needed somebody elite, um, some elite quarterback to help lead them because a the just like the NFC East, AFC is not a mess around uh, division. Broncos, uh, not Broncos. Sorry, I'm looking at the Broncos for the Jets Broncos game, and it's just stuck in my head of Broncos country. Let's ride. But um, you've got the Bills and you've got the Dolphins. Like, I'm not super sold on the Dolphins. Like, I think they're a good team. They got the best wide receiving one and two on the planet. And that's uh, that's someone you play twice. Like, that's not that's not two guaranteed wins. It's not playing the commander or I would would say playing the commanders last year. That didn't turn out too well. It's not playing the Cardinals. It's not playing the Texans, uh, which they do play the Texans this year. So that, that might be a nice reprieve later in the season for them. But it's just, it's the perfect Jets thing to happen. And it makes me very happy. It's such a Jets thing to happen is the best way to describe it. Now, Here's here's also part of the situation outside of strength and schedule and stuff. They're down to one quarterback on their roster. Zach right. uh, that is Zach Wilson. So theoretically San we get another San Francisco from last year. People get hurt. If Zach Wilson gets hurt in the next week, who's going to be their quarterback? Who's their emergency guy? So they need to find somebody very quickly and it needs to be somebody of above average caliber and that's that's I don't know the why problem you didn't just be Mike White. oh man I don't know I, why you didn't just find some extra pennies if for you him can, if they could have paid Mike White I would have been a lot more comfortable and like and they dumped Zach Wilson I would have been like I would have been like Jets still have a chance this season I wouldn't but I can't say that anymore. <laughs> so we'll see if they find an above average quarterback to throw in there to be able to just help rally the team. Uh, another right. thing that yeah. happened this last week, and I think this is, uh, no, one second last low. Pittsburgh's offense got outscored by their defense. I think it ended up being even, all things told, but... Yeah, that kind of sums it. Like, we already talked about the Browns game. That Deshaun Watson actively scored enough points for the other team to get them the win. Yeah. Um, ha, 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 ha. But also, like, woof, a doof of this Pittsburgh offense. Um, honestly, someone summed it up the best. It's like, yeah, I hope the, like, you know, all the Steelers fans hate their offensive coordinator, Matt Canada, who could hide behind Ben Roethlisberger being a statue before, but now can't do that. Yeah. Um, as someone said, it's like, I don't want him to leave Pittsburgh. There are so few good offensive coordinators in this league. Are we really going to waste one on Kenny Pickett's? Um, yeah. Who, as we said before, you know, the Steelers brought him in to be an even keeled, like safe floor, like a guy who just drops back, does the passes, gets you some yards. But he seems to think he's like in the Mahomes tier of like tumbling around, rubbery elbow doing things that he can't do. He doesn't have a strong enough arm, he's not accurate enough, and he's not big enough. And his hands are tiny. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, Sun's getting real low for Pittsburgh. They have... Even in a win. They're, they're kind of... They're, they're kind of like... Like the average Joe's gym of football teams this season, as of right now, in my opinion. Where they have good people, they have bad people. They have... Like Kenny Pickett, I wouldn't say he's a terrible quarterback. I would say he's I mean, like, perfect. terrible. I would say he's perfectly average. It's just what is whatever is happening is just making like it's like it's like the None curse. Of it each other. Yeah, it doesn't like the chemistry. Like the chemistry formula is on the table, but it's not balanced. That's a good way of putting it. And also, like, and, you know, the refusal to figure out the offensive line would be a problem. Yeah, once again, I, I didn't watch a super amount of this game, but Isaac Sayamalu, when I watch it, only offensive linemen that is, like, holding his own 
mm-hmm. in ninety percent of the plays I've I've seen. Like everyone else is like, they can, but it's at a lower percentage than what I've seen. But also, I'm looking for him because I'm a fan of his. Right, right. Tom's favorite player. Um. Yes. Uh. Otherwise, the only other low note is Packers kind of blocked it as I described. Yeah. They had a decisive lead on that game. Uh, Desmond Ritter, Jesus Christ, man, you are single handedly going to drive Kyle Pitts and Drake London out of town. You are very bad. Oh, man. And it was a combination of just poor defensive play and an unfortunate false start called on Jordan Love where he moved a little too soon on a quarterback sneak. Just kind of a bummer because we were rooting for them. Yeah. And also, like, it's just frustrating that this team is going to be held back by their defense, even though the whole meme was that they're picking first-round defenders over wide receivers and tight ends. And I also didn't know this whole drama with their left tackle. Had, like, a very bad ACL tear on turf, and now he's basically, like, just not playing games that are on turf, which that's been a discourse this season so far. But it's like, man, it's been two years since that injury, and you're, like basically rotating your starting left tackle that's like that's just unacceptable man come on this team has expectations yeah no it's a weird, it's, weird I think, problem to have i think it's just it's just interesting for them they're they're like a very like up and coming team from what they cuz they, when they lost rogers they also lost a lot of people because mm-hmm. Rodgers is like, give me this person. And the Jets were like, okay, Mr. Quarterback, that's going to lead us the entire season. Um, and Lazard is just stuck there. Yeah, no, that sucks for He could have been on a good team. Yeah. That, but that foolish bastard. It was a little bit of a rough game for the Packers. A lot of like silly little mistakes uh-huh. that put them down. But I feel like if you just got, like, you get a cleanup session for a practice. Um, when do they play? They, they play Sunday this upcoming week. So I think I think they can really just, like, spend, like, the first couple of practices of the week just kind of fine-tuning things that they blew, really going over, that, like, watching their own tape. I think could be the biggest benefit for them. Agreed. Um, and on that note, we head over to our notes. Wait, uh, um, yeah, no, you're right. Sorry. I, I mixed up my own eyeballs and list. Um, we already talked about the fact that the giants had 60 unanswered yeah. points to start their season, which just feels overwhelming. That's like a college game. That's like, like a double A team versus um, like USC or something. Yeah. Um, I like this question you brought up. How good could Dallas be with the games they've had? Um, I genuinely don't know. So I'm on, I'm on, uh, I'm big on Reddit. I like, and when I say big on Reddit, I mean, I go on Reddit a lot. I don't actually post anything. And one of the biggest ones is there are me mores for all the divisions and I highly recommend it. It's entertaining. And hmm. uh, no surprise to anyone, one of the most brutal about each other and other divisions is the NFC East, where it's we're mean and we don't care. Um, it's what some One of the mods posted when Aaron Rodgers tore his... Um, it, like, when he had broke his Achilles, um, one of the mods on the nfc north subreddit was like hey we're not going to tolerate jokes about that because it's like a serious injury and stuff and the nfc east subreddit had jokes not only making fun of the Ro- aaron Rodgers, but making fun of that mod post that's how vicious they are and yeah it's <laughs> i just man i'm it, glad i've gotten out of that phase of my fandom oh man it's you would have Peak Bills Carter would have a great time. Um, oh, I would have gotten arrested. But the, like, it's always, the the motto of almost every single meme slash week is 
if you lost for the week, it's gonna there's gonna be a picture with all the winners of the team going. It smells like bitch in here. Um, <laughs> I'm not even kidding you. There's so many, and everyone also is like super hyped. Like the Cowboys fans are going nuts because they've had two pretty solid games. And my question is, how good they c- can they be with what they've put up? Because week one was against the Giants, which you're thinking, oh, playoff caliber Giants, that's kind of scary for them. Like this <laughs> should this should be a good game, and then you see a forty and zero blowout, and it's just like, oh, Dallas has their lives together. But then you go to week two. This is this is why I say, like I said, I think for the question of the week last week, to not like. What like based off of what is luck and what is skill is you gotta wait till at least week three. Because week two, the Giants right. played the Cardinals. Almost completely unbiasedly, one of the worst teams out there at the moment. And they struggled to win. They had mm. twenty points scored against them unanswered, and then they struggled to win. Which is what and then the Cowboys on the opposite side played the Zach Wilson Jets. Right. And yeah, it's on one hand, it's like they do have talent. CD Lamb is good. Yes. Dak, whether I like him or not, whether or not I think he's great, is a good quarterback. At some point, it betrays like intellectual integrity to suggest otherwise. Yes. Michael and Parsons. They have Michael Parsons, defense. who who is kind of reaching like he's the closest thing we have to Patrick Mahomes on defense where it's like just having him kind of just defines every like you just have sort of a guaranteed level of quality then yeah no he's gonna do he's gonna do what he does best and that is dominate on his side of the ball yeah i like i don't know i would still favor the eagles over them i would still favor yeah the niners over them it is a matter of time until those concepts are put out yeah, because also because again, it's the Cowboys. They lose in the playoffs. That's what they do. Yeah, they blow it when it matters most. But also, it's like how week three Cowboys have the Cardinals. How good? God. Like week four, they have the as of right now own two Patriots. It's just like at what point? Do, there we go. Week five is when they face the 49ers. and as of right now, they're the only team that looks like I caliber like a solid caliber level team so that's Mm. five weeks to not even not just get their like lives together and get on the same page and sync up that's five weeks they can just uh gather up wins before they face somebody of threat Mm -hmm. and then and then they start Um, picking up some harder games oh yeah Again, they've become one of those wake me up when it's uh, wake me up when like the playoffs start kind of teams because it's like you've had like three straight years of cartoonish losses in the playoffs. Like let's let's see you do it. Yeah, like their end of the season is going to be rougher than their beginning of the season. But let's see how what they're looking at when they get to that point because that's when they face the Eagles. Again, Dolphins, Bills, like, mm-hmm. uh, not trying to sound demeaning to other teams, but, like, real teams. <laughs> it, no, that's a fair way of putting it. Um, my question of the week, because we already talked about big entries, is what is the key trait you want in a coach? Hmm. All right, you start us off with that. For me, it's self-awareness. Like, as I talked about with the Bills, my worry is that, like, we have the team. Like, I need a guy who can soberly look around and evaluate what kind of team he has and, like, sort of spin it based on that. One of the things that's impressed me with Sirianni is his ability to go from a rebuilding team to a contender. Like, he's been able to modulate his tone and energy based off of that and has successfully kind of given his weird, quirky underdog energy the same, like, validity when you're expected to win a Super Bowl, regardless of, like, the kind of slowish start they've had this year. Like, whereas alternatively, Brandon Staley, who is, like, this sort of promised prince, this, like, guy who everyone wanted to be a head coach, 
has come in and immediately pooped himself and you realize like, oh, this guy is in the deep end and can't get out safely. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, for me, like it's not even a composure thing. It's more of just a ability because that's what composure comes from, an understanding of everything around you and an ability to work off of that. Yeah. Um, what I'm looking for in a coach is, I, I guess is the, uh, kind of like what you said, but also not, is more of just straight, like, I'm looking for a coach that just believes like realistically believes i guess is the best description mm -hmm. which you're if you're listening to like siriani um the words you can hear because when he's not swearing during his speeches um which best part about the kelsey documentary is they showed some of the clips that eagle social posted but it included all the swears and stuff so it was like kind of interesting to watch that um but it's like you got he he's real with his team he knows what they can do and he doesn't like let that like he doesn't let him just go it's like oh we were in this um we were in the super bowl last year we're gonna dominate this season it's like all right that game is done now to the next game and he exclusively it's a mentality of what is the next game what do we prep for and that like realistic level of statistician in him, not trying to overhype his team, not trying to not sell them short, but he's like, he's real about his like what he sees. He's like, I think it was like the only like the player he called out the most for after the week two game was Jake Elliott. He's like, couldn't stop saying high enough praises because the dudes kick and field goals left and right and mm -hmm. like it's nothing so it's kind of just interesting that kind of like that's that's kind of what i look for yeah like the alternative is like the rich gannon um bit from his little press conference. <laughs> like bus, got kids who take the bus versus kids who take the private car and i'm like oh man, man you know I, you know I you're just love... you're already in save my job mode i loved it i don't know I think it was his best described on like the Pat McAfee show of who it was posted from a Cardinals level social, like social media. So somebody on the Cardinals lineup had the mentality of seeing that get like, like watching that speech and him starting like just deadpan going. So where are my killers at? And yeah, like asking that's people how like they showed up to, I believe, if I recall correctly, the worst rated, um, like, setup for by the Players Association for this year. Or oh, last yeah. year. And he starts off with asking people who drove here today and who took the bus. I didn't even with, think about it, that framing. That's hilarious. Yeah. It's just like thinking about that kind of stuff and it's just like what is happening in arizona and somebody willingly posted that they watched it happen and thought our fans are gonna love this meanwhile you got a siriani speech who gannon was under for a little bit and siriani's like he's like yelling at them getting everyone hype like really building it and he's like He's not, he's, the when the room's quiet, it's because Sirianni wants it to be quiet. It's not quiet because he asked them a question and nobody knows what the hell's going on. <laughs> right, right. Man, I need to, I need oh. to make a shirt of that, of that speech. <laughs> I'd oh, wear God. it so much. <laughs> They'd reload the gun again, Kevin. Uh, I'm waiting for um, them to. <laughs> As as we roll into this coming week, um, we, I don't know, this is kind of a weird lineup of games. There's only, like, I'm looking around at the ones that really uh, excite me. Of course, it, one of the marquee games is Eagles-Buccaneers, two undefeated teams. Yes, someone's uh, for some reason we're doing, loss. For some reason, we're doing another week of the two Monday night games, which I just, I I'm think... not a fan of. 
I think that's because of the writer strike. Actually, I think that's why it's happened. At least that's happening really this early. Sad. I don't know that that's for really I don't sad. know that for a fact, but I think they planned it out because of that to get station views or something like that. That I don't that honestly wouldn't. That's me. not a that's not a quote me on that kind of call. That's a right. This um, is something also I've have... seen through rumor mills. Right, there's Rams Bengals, which is a fun one in terms of like a former Super Bowl matchup. Yeah. Um, Falcons Lions, I think, is kind of close to a marquee game. It... An undefeated team and a team with high upside. Yeah. You yeah, know, it's but as as of right now, both of those teams are gonna win, like win above average or like above mm. five hundred. So it's kind of that's kind of like an interesting like hot game. Mm -hmm. but also you got the vikings chargers like not amazing showings for them this week um 49ers giants if you told me it was based off of the playoff level performances that they did it's like now hang on i i could be behind this right but it's not the it's clearly not the four um the playoff caliber giants and saquon's out already yeah that kind of lost it for me so uh, I might put it on to have it on. I might not. Um, um, what is your sleeper game? Ooh. I think... Uh, man, this is, this is a little bit of a tough week for it. Because I wouldn't classify a Super Bowl rematch as a sleeper game. Because mm -hmm. that's like... That's a little bit more of a, like a grudge match kind of thing. Where it's like, all right, we're going to run it back. We're not the same teams as we once were, but we're going to run this back. Like, for it. I think... I think the sleep, my sleeper team pick is going to be Saints-Packers. Nice. I was thinking that one. They're They're both too, like questionable teams on their quality and i think i think it'll be interesting to see how well that one goes um mm -hmm. another one that i was kind of teasing around with it's not going to be my pick but i was teasing around with colts ravens too like that would be my runner-up yes if richardson plays i think that's going to be a very game but I'm not certain on that yeah, front. That that's the question mark. That's why I, I went with Green Bay, Nolens. Who's yours? Who who do you think we don't sleep on? Well, mine is my Schadenfreude pick, Chargers Vikings, because <laughs> these the game two I... wonky ass cursed franchises. Uh, the game that I literally a... said was like, oh, no one wants to see that. It is going to be the funniest. It has a chance to be the funniest game in NFL history. They uh -huh. might have Brandon Staley might do something that forces the team to fire him before the game is over. I am very Honestly, excited. I can, if there was a game for something absurd to happen to in this week, it would be that game. I think that has like the biggest potential of like. You're if there's ever going to be a game that's like a. Do you remember that Vikings Colts game where the Colts were up by like thirty? Yeah. If that was ever going to happen again, it, it's it, gonna be the same. Here's the thing, though: who would it happen for? Because it's like, at the rate they're both going, it would happen against them both. Like, I oh, can God, see, right. I can see Kirk accidentally, like throwing an interception, and then Justin Jefferson because he was clearly getting frustrated at the Eagles game. But getting um, oh, yeah. him getting frustrated, just tackling a dude so hard he fumbles it, and like Justin Jefferson recovers it or something like that. Like, oh, God, some, that would be so funny. Like that's if if there was a game to throw in like power ups to, I would want it to be that one. Oh God, that that would be very funny. Yeah.
Or even just turn on big head mode. Oh, big head mode. All right. Uh, I miss those days of video games before everything was a microtransaction. Yeah. All right, so... Any final thoughts as we wrap up? Say, I think we did this last week. Which game do you not want to bother watching? Like, who, uh, who, who would be the one that you're just like, I don't... I don't care enough. Honestly, this isn't going to be good. Kansas City, Chicago, Kansas City, Chicago, because it's just going to make me sad. Can't. Yeah, I can see that. Or Titans Browns. It could be good. Yeah, I'm, I'm. Those both teams are so 50 50 right now that it could be like a juggernaut matchup or it could just be dog shit on ice. I'm going to assume the latter until proven otherwise. Yeah. All right. Solid week. Send us home, Carter. Thank you all for watching. We are so happy that we are no longer under. We hope you enjoy this week, and we can't wait to talk to you next. All right. See you at week three.